Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, different type of video today. We're going to check out the channel Dakota of Earth with the video Sadhu Sees God on 5MEO DMT. I honestly was just browsing through YouTube and then I saw this video in my feed, so I thought might as well make a different type of reaction video. That being said, I previously, before reverting to Islam, had a lot of experiences with spiritual practices, with psychedelics, with shamanism, meditation, Buddhism, Hinduism, etc, etc. So therefore, admittedly, this video is pretty selfish. I'm actually interested to see what this sadhu here saw on DMT. Guys, before we jump into the video, as always, if you enjoy my content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box to further support my work. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. This sadhu in India smoked 5-MeO DMT, and I documented his experience. We were at a mela in Prayagraj in an empty tent. We spent a few Why days here and throughout naked? that time he smoked probably three or four times. It's said that the yogis of India are able to achieve these states naturally. So I was curious to see what would happen. Is there light in that locker? The juicy light? Bright light? Yeah, bright. White? Yeah. Many, many, That's my experience uh, as well. Sands, Lucy, Money, they are sitting. Tapas Loka, Satya Lega, all things are like a fully generated Mahavishnu. Yeah, Did you see Indian gods? Mahavishnu, yeah. Mahavishnu. Yeah. Mahavishnu, Shiva. Ram. Yeah. For me personally, not having touched those substances for roughly five years by now, looking at this, the whole setup already is very demonic. It is not pure, it is not clean, it is not dignified like the practice that we find in Islam. Simply submitting and praying to one God alone. This ritual, on the other hand, is very humiliating. The man is sitting there half naked, behaving like a beast ultimately to get some input. And then he mentions that he saw the Hindu gods, but just seeing them doesn't mean that therefore there are truly gods. There are certain entities, and I would agree with that, of course. Multiple people, many, many people have had those psychedelic spiritual experiences and they saw entities. But how do we come to the conclusion then that they are gods and that they should be worshipped? From Islamic stance, they would be jinn, of course. I feel uh, uh, two, uh, four or five siddhas. Siddhas. They also meet me in the lokas. Mm. I don't the understand. The of your guru. The siddhas? Yeah, yeah they were Baba. The guru or guru? Yeah. The interviewer knows more than the Hindu. About his own trip. Years old, they go to other locals, the city, mm. and blessings all people. These types. I feel his energy. He's my yoga Kundalini Kundalini all the time. He's very powerful yoga. Mm. And he's also Moksha, Saruta. Not in body. Is Moksha. There? Moksha, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can't expect much because when you come back from that experience, you're still integrating the experience, but it's fleeting like a dream. Ultimately, you can relate. Probably you had a dream and it was so vivid and then you wake up and you try to remember what it was, but it's just going away. It's disappearing like fine sand. 
And even though it was so vivid and clear just a couple of seconds ago, now you cannot remember it any longer. And this is due to the shift in consciousness, ultimately. Everything that you experience within those spiritual realms is very, very hard to integrate. And therefore, the man is just sitting there trying to remember. He probably doesn't know much anymore. What's the difference? The difference between your meditation and Sapo? What's the yeah, that's difference? Interesting. The difference. Uh, only difference so it's a um, uh, build you uh, fastly and ever can you couldn't really fastly right and give you uh, so much energy to you know your past future present all things if you do this so you know all your past future all things and chakra plexus uh, activation but uh, you, if you are uh, uh, this time you activated sometimes people death so he not control his uh, the power right Sans very important power. so I can relate to his experience here I had experiences where my whole past was revealed to me because your past as well is very very fleeting you can't really remember what happened when you were three or four years old many days that you've just forgotten but with this spiritual experience, with the psychedelic experience, you can go back in time and your whole past just laid before you and you know about every single second, every moment that ever happened. And you can even look into the future and understand what will come about, what will happen in your life. It's quite amazing, to be honest. But what is really important here is that he mentioned that there is so much power that brings you to certain places. And ultimately, many people are not ready for that whatsoever. This man, he's been training on the spiritual path for what it's worth. And he's seen those realms, those entities. But many people, they just live regular average lives. And all of a sudden, they are smoking DMT and they're catapulted into a spiritual realm. If you would compare that to the gym, for example, if you go to the gym for the very first time, of course, you're not going to bench press 100 kilograms, right? You're going to start with a bar and then with 5 kg, 10 kg and work yourself up to that weight. And it's the same with the spiritual pursuit here. People that have been meditating, have been into ascetic practices, seclusion and whatnot, they can maybe then deal with such substances. But most people truly cannot. And you maintain the activation with asanas? To maintain the chakras uh, open. Uh, only breathing, breathing power. With pranayama. Uh, pranayama. Hmm. Pranayama is uh, men. Yes. Yeah, pranayama is just breathing. Certain techniques to stay in that space. When you were in the locus, were you seeing anything? Yeah, so many things. And I feel so. I am uh, all locus. I also. I see many, many Brahmas, many, many things, uh, and many, many Lokas. Yeah, I feel this energy. Uh, sometimes I think so, which is not good. When I am healing this, it's very powerful. If you not, uh, so your uh, body, uh, are you going to other Loka, not coming. If you have uh, your controlling system. No controlling system. Yeah, it's so, like steroids ultimately, uh, spiritual you, steroids. Uh, left your body. Uh, it is also positive, not negative. First time I feel so, but it is positive. First time you felt what? Yeah, first time I feel so, it's uh, some. Uh, I see some negative energy uh, comes in my mind. Yeah, first time. Second time come, but third time, no, it's all clean. gone. Yeah. It's clean. So it's a um, uh, disturbance, uh, uh, any people's disturb. So uh, it is very, uh, so much problems. Mm. It is very peaceful, alone palace, you. Will you bless my savanna? <laughs> yes. Thank you, Jack. Oh, right, guys. And this is it for today's video. Very interesting watch, I have to say. But unfortunately, he couldn't extract much. I would say that it would be way, way better to interview the man not right after his experience, but after he started integrating it. So potentially days or weeks later. 
Anyways, what he described there from what I understood is that he saw the bright white light. This is what I experienced as well back in the day. And then he saw certain entities that he calls God due to his religious context. Of course, we would call them something different. Jinns, as I mentioned, a Christian would call them demons potentially. And other than that, he spoke about the power. And from what I understood, the first one or two experiences weren't that positive. But now in the third experience, he saw it positively due to certain obstructions. And this is something that I experienced myself as well. And I heard from other people that when you go into the experience for the first time, you have a lot of ego, a lot of blockages, and you cannot truly see. There's a lot of interference from your own self. And then after you did it once or twice or three times, after that, it becomes very smooth and you start to really unravel that spiritual world. But that being said, the question becomes, for what? This is really what it boiled down to for me personally, because I, back in the day, experienced many psychedelic experiences, spiritual practices and whatnot. I mentioned this, but it was due to a health issue that I had. I wasn't really interested in it whatsoever, but I saw physical healing coming from those substances. And this is why I embarked on my journey to go to South America to experience shamanism and whatnot. It was not an endeavor of seeking spirituality. I truly did it in the first place to heal physically and I saw some success with it and this is why I stuck with it. However, now coming to Islam and looking back on that journey, I truly ask myself oftentimes, why? For me personally, I understand why because I was very, very curious and I had to understand everything. But the reality is you will never understand everything. It's absolutely impossible. You will never understand everything because you are not God. Even in those uh, godly spiritual experiences, no matter what you will encounter, you cannot bring it back and you cannot bring it back long term. And moreover, yet again, you will always be confined to your human vessel. And therefore, you will never have the knowledge of God, the total knowledge of the unseen. And this is why I say that all of those substances they're like little side quests ultimately in this matrix, but they don't bring you anywhere because the name of the game here is to be human. This is really what it's about. We came into this experience as humans to be human and to experience humanity, to experience this life with everything. It's ups and downs, it's food, nature, people and whatnot. This game is truly about being human. And what I see with many, many spiritual practices is a way of escapism ultimately. And this is why within Islam, ultimately, it's just about praying to God, right? Worshipping one God alone and returning to what it means to be a proper human. A human that has a solid family, a solid foundation spiritually, but is in this world and is not trying to escape it. Because ultimately, death will come to all of us sooner than later. So why not simply be a human? Simply enjoy your life in the way God wanted it. And this is why the Quran is so powerful, right? Simply read the Quran, understand what your position as a human is here in this world, live a dignified, beautiful, pure life as a Muslim and stop the seeking. This is truly what Islam did for me, I was consistently seeking, consistently looking for something. But once I found Islam, I finally could become human. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out the links in the description box to further support my work. It is crucial for you guys to support my work because YouTube is demonetizing, shadow banning, etc., etc. Thank you very much for that. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. <laughs> Oh